Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. I'm Philip with Cole Ironworks, and today we will be showing you how to forge a cross peen hammer. I took some calipers and I scribed down the side of this to find my center point. And then I took a center punch and made a little mark. That way when the steel is hot, I can see where I need to uh, put my hole at. So you can see how the billet bowed a little bit while we were punching. Uh, what I'm gonna do to solve that is drift from this side first so it forges these faces up. So that is our next step. just want to get through the hammer. So we're through. All right, so now we're just gonna start doing that. So now we're starting to get the shape that we're looking for. Uh, you can see the bottom's flattened out a little bit and we're just gonna keep working it until we have that bulge on both sides and then we can uh, start making an actual cross beam hammer. So now we're gonna choose which side we wanna be our face. Uh, I think I'm gonna choose the slightly longer side and I will draw the material for the peen out of the, a little bit out of the center, so. here so that you don't fish lip the piece. All right, we're gonna take another heat, but you can see we're starting to get some fish lipping. I'm gonna try to avoid that. So these are our new fuller rails. Uh, the purpose of these is for you guys to be able to make your own dies super easily, which uh, I did here. I just welded some half inch plate onto some inch and a quarter or inch and a half round and made some uh, custom fullering dies super easily. Um, when you order those, you will receive these inserts with them. 
and they're meant to be used either this way or if you need to get into tight spots, you can use them this way as well. Um, these are made from professionally heat treated H13 and uh, they're a pretty sweet die set, especially if you make hammers or uh, axes, stuff like that. They're very helpful. All right, so you can see here we got a little bit of fish slipping. It's only on the corners, so I'm just gonna cut it off with a bandsaw and then grind the peen. That's why I kind of made it uh, thinner there in the section because that's where I plan on cutting it, so. Hey guys, so as you could probably see, uh, our forging ended up a little bit wonky, so I took it over to the grinder room and did some grinding on it. And it's actually turning out pretty sweet now. So, um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna light the forge, um, get this thing nice and hot and wire brush the heck out of it and we will let it cool in the forge. And the reason we're gonna do that is we need to normalize it. And that will align all the grain uh, before we do our real heat treat on it. And it will also give us a nice texture making uh, my forge work look a little bit better. So uh, stay tuned, we got some cool stuff planned. All right guys, I just shut down the forge. I'm letting the hammer billet cool in there to kind of normalize the steel before we quench it. Um, I am gonna do like some final face grinding before quenching. Um, yeah, stay tuned. Hey guys, so off camera, I uh, finished this hammer head up and I just rough ground it to shape and heat treated it, which is something we will get into in a later video. So uh, what I used to make this was our two and a half pound 1045 stock. And then also um, we sell these hammer handles on the website. These come with a wooden wedge and a metal wedge as well. And I will show you guys how to use those. So um, let's finish this hammer up. All right guys, so we got the hammer handle that uh, we purchased from the website, as well as our billet that we forged into this beautiful cross peen hammer. Um, now I'm gonna grind this, uh, the end of the handle a little bit to make a perfect fit for this hammer. And uh, we're gonna get this thing hung, so stay tuned. So uh, we're fitting up the handle now. Um, I just ground this with the 36 grit, grit belt and I'm just trying to see how far I can get this head on there. Hopefully it's all the way, but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go back to the grinder and touch it up a little bit to get this thing all the way down. But uh, the cool thing about this is when you are test fitting, um, it compresses the wood so you can see where it's contacting a lot and then you can grind those spots away and get a really, really nice custom fit every time, so. All right, so now you can see we removed uh, most of that material that was touching. So let's see if this will go a little bit further on there now. All right, we're getting closer. Still have a little bit more to remove because we want, we want enough to stick out the top that we can grind it flat and make it look nice. So a little bit more to go, but this is, uh, it's turning out great. So it's going on straight, which is nice. Sometimes they don't, so. So here I am just grinding a chisel uh, edge onto the wedge so that it can get started easier. Uh, if you don't do that, a lot of times you'll break the edge of the wedge and then it'll just fold over. So this helps get it started a little bit easier. I use wood glue on the very end of the wedge to just help hold everything in place. And right here, I'm opening up 
the slit in the top of the hammerhead to, so that I can start the wedge. A good tool to use for that is a screwdriver. So now I'm just driving the wedge. You want to do it like this just so you don't have any uh, missed hits and risk breaking the wedge before it's at adequate depth. So just keep checking it. Um, then you use a bandsaw to chop off the excess. So on this one I did use a safety wedge and that's just because they come with our handles. Typically on the hammers I sell I do not put a safety wedge in and the reason that is is because handles expand and contract depending upon where they're uh, shipped to and I like to leave space for the customer to do that in case the handle gets loose. Yep, there is a safety wedge. Now you just clean that up on a grinder, try to make it all look consistent and nice. All right, so I just went and grabbed some boiled linseed oil, some rags, gloves, and a little piece of Scotch-Brite. Uh, we got our wedge set. We also have our safety wedge set. So now all we have to do is clean up all the paw prints all over this uh, handle. So we'll clean it up, oil it, and this thing will be ready to use. So now the moment you've all been waiting for. It's oil time. This is seriously my favorite part. It's when it actually becomes a real hammer. So, and you can do as many or as few coats of this as you want. You could have used it right when it was, uh, right when the head was on the handle, but this makes it last a little bit longer, seals the wood, and uh, just makes it look a lot nicer. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope it was entertaining to watch and I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, you can order these hammer blanks and handle blanks on our website if you'd like to make one of your own. So in this video, we didn't really go into heat treat of this or uh, how to grind it. So we will be releasing some videos at a later date. Uh, doing a more thorough dive into that. So just stay tuned and uh, We'll have those out for you. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to smash that like and subscribe button, okay?